Hey everyone, it's Mike Michalko and I am the author of The Drumming System and in this lesson I want to teach you the main groove from the song Tom Sawyer by Rush. And this is a beat that I often get asked a lot about, you know, like how did I learn it, uh, how long did it take me, etc, etc. Well, I remember when I first tried to learn this beat, I just didn't have the hand speed. I couldn't play the 16ths as fast as Neil was playing them, so I did have to practice slower. I did have a book that had a transcription of it, and I was kind of able to read a little bit, and I would just do the stuff slow and then eventually make it to the point where I could work the speed up to play along with the song. Because the 16th notes are pounded out pretty seriously throughout the majority of the song. So that's one thing that you have to focus on when you're playing, this tune is the high intensity level. And Neil talks about Tom Sawyer as being one of the most challenging songs for him to play. And it's not so much mentally, it's physically, because the dynamic level is very high in this song when you think about it. So it's good to practice it just to kind of get it, but then when you finally are going to sit down with the song, is, you know, beat the heck out of the drums and play this thing with full force kind of thing, right? Okay, so like I mentioned, the hi-hat is going to be rocking out the 16ths, for most of uh, the intro anyways. a Couple little breaks where we open the hi-hat and we hit the crash cymbals, but that's gonna be the main essential thing. The snare drum is on two and four for every single measure, which is really nice, so it doesn't get too fancy at that point. The trick for me was the bass drums change every single measure. Now at first that was a challenge, but then I realized, hey, this is kind of cool because it's not like the songs that I was previously learning where it was the same thing over and over, which to me sometimes got a little boring. And I went, okay, yeah, this seems pretty simple. So the new challenge was to start listening to Rush and see how much of a challenge that could be. And of course, it was a huge challenge for me. But I love the fact that uh, the bass drums were starting to change every single measure. And if you listen closely to the intro of the song, especially when Getty Lee's voice comes in, a lot of those bass drums uh, line up with his vocal phrasing. So it's actually pretty cool. So um, if you look at the sheet music that you guys got, you'll notice that there's bass drums all over the place. And uh, first measure is pretty simple because the bass drum is on the one and the end of three. That's pretty simple. Then we've got the one and the end of three and the E of four. The next one you've got the one, the three, and the end. Next measure, one, three and, and four E. Then you've got one E and the A ah of the next measure, and of three, one E and the A ah of the next measure, and of three, E of four, one E and the A ah of the next measure, the and of three, the and of four, the one E and the A ah of the next measure, the and of three and the e and of four. Wow, that's a lot to think about. Okay, so as opposed to me, you know, really breaking that down for you, I'm gonna play it for you guys. A lot of you people might already know this song, but it's really good to practice this slow. And if you can't catch the open hi-hats that I do, uh, add them later, that's the thing too. If you can't add the crash cymbals that I'll play, add those later. The main thing is to try to keep the vibe happening on the hi-hat the snare drum, and the bass drum. So I always say the little details like open hi-hats, crash cymbals, those kind of things can be added a little bit later once you get the general the general gist of the whole thing. So um, why don't we uh, use a couple examples for you at some a couple different tempos and you'll see how this sounds.
So now that you have a basic idea of how that beat works, at least the first eight measures, okay, because the cool thing is if you play the first eight measures, the next eight measures are pretty much the same thing with no crash cymbals. But really important now, what you can focus on is those open hi-hats. And they are so subtle, so some people go, wow, I can't even hear them. But the way Neil plays them on the album is uh, they're so subtle, and you almost have to go back to the old vinyl records to really hear them, because on some of the newer CDs and that, they're a little bit harder to hear, because they're so low in the mix. But uh, what you need to do, um, when you're playing all those 16s, to pull out a little tiny 16th open hi-hat, is you have to be very pre precise with your left foot. There's no room for error. So let me kind of give you an example here. I'm just going to play hi-hat and the occasional open hi-hat, just to kind of show you what I, what I mean. And I'll play it slow, and then I'll sort of speed it up. And this is not any part of the song. I'm just going to kind of show you what needs to happen on the hi-hat, OK? So what I was demonstrating there is you can play either heel up or heel down, whatever's more comfortable for you. I've, I've done it both ways, and both ways work. And to be honest, I don't even realize what I'm playing, heel up or heel down, when I do it anymore. But I think it was one of those things that I was kind of thinking about too much, and finally it just started to happen. So I would suggest practicing both heel up and heel down to see which feels more comfortable. And one thing that happens often in this song is you're going to be opening the hi-hats on the E of 4, for a lot of the measures um, throughout the first eight, uh, eight measures of the song. So I'm just going to play a basic uh, 16th note beat, bass drum on one and three, snare on two and four, and I'm going to open the hi-hat on the E of four, but it's got to be closed again on the and of four. So especially when you're going full tempo, there's not a lot of room uh, to keep the hi-hat open too long. So here we go. So that can definitely be one thing you'd practice. But the next thing that you're going to have to start practicing is when that he opens those hi-hats, he also has a bass drum being played at the same time. So it ends up being a hi-hat bark with the bass drum at the same time. So this is kind of what happens. I'll give you an example of what happens between the open hi-hat and the bass drum on that one sixteenth note. Watch this. So for some of you drummers that have may not have tried that before, it's a new challenge for sure. So I would take this really slow. Let me do the same example I just did, which is going to be hi-hat on the 16th, snare on 2 and 4, bass on 1 and 3. But I'm going to open the hi-hat on the E of 4 and add the bass drum as well. Just to, It just gives it that little bit of a punch, that little bit of an accent on the E of 4. So here we go. So once you've practiced that, that's half the battle, okay? Because the second half of this exercise, which is the last four measures, he opens the hi-hat on the E of one, but there's two bass drums in a row on the one E. So this is the new challenge, okay? So well, I'm just going to show you the part that I'm talking about without the open hi-hat, okay? Okay, so you hear that bass, 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 snare, okay? On that second bass drum, we have to slightly open the hi-hat. So it's a bit of a challenge, okay? So you're going to have to go bass, open hi-hat with a bass, just the hi-hat, follow a hi-hat with a bass drum, followed by the snare, something like this. So 
So these are the type of exercises that I get my students at home playing because they want to learn the song and they want to learn every little detail and every little nuance. And I said, as opposed to constantly plugging away through the whole thing and missing those hi-hat notes, is just take sections of these beats and try to get them comfortable, try to ingrain them in your head and your hands and your feet, and it all starts to come together. Because when that happens, it's a really cool thing because now you have so much more ability to do things that just seem so unnatural for most drummers. And I found that uh, by practicing these types of things and taking these beats slow and breaking them down made my drumming so much better down the road. So practice this, have fun, eventually put the what you've learned to the song, try to play the whole entire song. It's a great song to be able to play and uh, it's going to build your chops, your musicality and hey, you'll end up knowing a Rush song, a very popular Rush song. So once again, my name is Mike Michalko. I am the author of The Drumming System. If you uh, click on the link below, you'll see more about what The Drumming System is. Hopefully we can hang out together sometime and uh, do some lessons in the comfort of your own home. Talk drums, play drums, learn drums. We'll see you real soon. Take care.